mtazamaji karibu tena kwa awamu ya pili ya the blessed one mbarikiwa we are here to inspire you to educate you to motivate you and that is what we've done the better part of uh, part ya kwanza ya segment hii na apostle Steve Kataka ambaye ameweza uh, mimi amenihimiza sana 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 hapo kwa not marrying somebody because she's beautiful beauty fades away <laughs> Uh, karibu tena pasta kadhaka yes mm. sasa mmeoana na Triza mm. now uh, i'm told ulikuwa umezaliwa kwa life ya kijeshi sasa unajua ukishaoa you become steve you don't become son of captain yes. <laughs> my father is called captain christopher mm. so you see sami I've never, you know, my childhood, most of my childhood, I, I never walked to school. I was taken to school. Wow. And um, of course, KU was the first time I started really being my own. Independent. Independent. My father is a good man. My parents are good. My mother passed on 2015. But when I went, let me go to KU. My father, even when I went to KU, my father made my bed. Let me say I was spoiled. So, <laughs> and um, now I get married to this girl, and uh, and she used to tell me, you know, Steve. One time she asked me, Steve, can you feed me when we are dating? Can you feed me? I said, of course I can. But I wondered why. I didn't look tough, of course. But uh, I never thought life can be that tough, because basically in my childhood I had everything I needed. So I got married 2001. When we were getting married, we didn't have jobs. We basically had to believe God for our wedding. It took us two years. We said, let's believe God to help us so that we can save money. Our wedding budget was around 150,000. And we thought within two years we'll have saved. So my wife went back to their home in, 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 in Soy, and she was having a bakery there. Me, I was a hawker, I used to hawk books in Kerenyaga. So we were thinking we are going to have some savings which will help us in our wedding. But come 2001, uh, we had said we'll get married in April. Then something happened, they postponed. I was very happy. You know, when they kept on pushing, <laughs> when they kept on pushing the dates, I, on my face I used to show my wife I'm being disappointed. But inside my heart I was saying, you see now, I'm not to blame, I'm not to blame. Because things are not working. And um, come August, I had no money. Can I tell you, I didn't have a bank account. The only bank account I had was in Postbank, KKU. which I had opened when I was in KU. And it had 500 bob, and it had stayed for two years without running. So one time I was so broke, I went to get the 500 bob. And they told me, you know what, Steve? This thing has been running. You owe us money. <laughs> and I disappeared. <laughs> so I had nothing. And uh, come November, we were planning for our wedding. So, of course, um, we did pre-wedding, raised some money. It's so bad. I, didn't even, I, I don't even want to say that. No, but um, you see, that's when I opened a bank account with equity. So, Mimi took a fanya Rusi 2001, November. I think 21st. After how many postponements? Maybe two or three. We kept on pushing, uh, but for the November we stood with that date, and uh, of course our wedding was in Kerenyaga. It was a beautiful wedding. Then after wedding, the Anashanga. What next? When you after wedding, <laughs> at times you really work so hard to plan for a wedding, and you've not worked hard to plan for your marriage. So after wedding, Sami comes marriage. So after wedding, we went for honeymoon wedding somewhere. It's one day. One day. Kila kitu, hizi picha unawana za wedo. Hizi ni za deni. Hii picha nilikuwa deni. Hii deni nililipa na seven months. Never do a wedding. Ya deni. And you know what, Sami? Even after with the way we struggled, there are guys who still say do alikula nyama baridi. Imagine after struggling all that much. 
And we did a garden. You know, my wife told me, Steve, I want us to do a garden wedding. I like any fool, I said, yes. You know, when you're in love, you're just foolish. When you're in love, when you're in love you say, yes, yes. yes, yes. And, I, I, and I say that. But there are guys who still complained. And that was the best hotel in that town. That the food was cold. Another fellow complained that he didn't get a soda. And we really struggled. <laughs> so it took me seven months to recover. <laughs> to, pay my, to, pay, to, to pay my photo from the shock. From the shock. And, <laughs> and so after that, I came, we said, where do we start life? And so my wife was based here in Bungoma. She was teaching in a, in a school in Aitwa Bulimbo. And Mimi, I was you know, after we left KU, I got an honors degree. And nowadays, Sami, there were very few guys who were in Kampo. Yeah. But unfortunately, by the time we were leaving campus, jobs were not easy. So I would apply jobs. Nobody even gave me a regret letter. <laughs> so I had an honors you degree. <laughs> even a regret. You know, at least when there's a regret letter, it shows at least Walishika <laughs> Barua. But I used to apply. Nobody was responding. It's like Steve did not exist. Wow. So I came to Bungoma with two sacks of rice and 200 shillings. 200 bob. E bag ya rice ilikuwa pesa tulikuwa tumepewa tununue kitanda. Msichana kutu akiolewa anapewa kitanda. Mm -hmm. So my wife's my mother-in-law gave my wife some money to buy a bed symbolizing that when you akuna kitanda stay where you have got and married. <laughs> and we converted that bed into bags of rice and started life. I landed in Keringet. When I say landing, see at I flew <laughs> <laughs> this guy is hilarious. We be escort. To kafika pale Keringet. Guniambi. I had never traveled by bus that long. And then um, two sacks of moya rice, nikaja bungoma, and I believed that I cannot fail because Christ is in me, the hope of glory. If you have Jesus in you, things may be tough. But you'll make it. Amen. I want you to remember that. So I believed in God that I had preached by that time seven years. I've seen miracles. When I would lay hands on people, I see the power of God hit people down. I saw miracles of healing. I saw crazy miracles. I believe that this God would help me. That's why I came. I never knew anybody in Bungoma. Nobody except my wife. I only knew one person. And I dared come here. And I believed God sent me in Bungoma in 2001. Yes, I came here through marriage, but also as an instruction from God. We had God. During our honeymoon, in Nyeri, God spoke to us. And that's what made me to come. So that's how I came. And the following day, I was a hawk. I began hawking rice. I've been a hawk in this town. I've hawked rice. I began with two, two sacks, then they increased to 10, then they increased into 24. Every two weeks I would bring 24. I began selling uh, in a small kiosk near the old Ketias, and I began distributing rice in Sharif's supermarkets in Mumias, Kakamega. You became, Webuye. A, you became a dealer. I became now, I began selling in wholesale. But then, you see, that was not why I went to university. So I was doing it to survive. Because some I don't like begging. It's very important. I don't like begging and I decided that my wife would not sleep hungry because I'm not working. So I said, if, if nobody hires me, I'll hire myself. So I was self-employed. But ahoka, ahoka. It's all about inspiring, educating, and motivating. Do anything. Just do anything. <laughs> Anything. Don't sleep. Imagine Sammy with a degree. I kept, my degree was in the house. My wife's degree. Also, she has an honors degree. She's a, two degrees, two degrees in, in the house. But you see, a paper cannot put food on, food on the table. If your paper cannot put food on the table, do something. You see, these are not stories. Can you read? This is evidence that I was a hooker. Like in 2002, this is a receipt that was to Ambwele Alliance Complex. <laughs> it is dated. Read it. Read it. 
And you tell me ni kwa na diapers ngapi? Hey. This 2450. 2450. What was I selling? Rice. Then what is that? Sausage. Uh, uh, sausage. <laughs> at, two, at 245. Here then inalipwa siku gani? Uh, then imelipwa mwaka 2022. 2002. By that time I was a senior hawker. You know, 2001 you are just a junior hawker. Mm -hmm. Then 2002 you are senior you now. Graduate. I'm graduating now. I'm not just selling rice <laughs> door to door. I used to do door to door evangelism. So I, I just. Evangelism of rice. No, no, no. Uh -huh. Yeah, evangelist. Uh -huh. I, I began being an evangelist in '94. Yeah. Yeah. But I said the same skill. I can also do door to door delivery. Delivery. <laughs> So I did that until 2003, and God spoke to me when I was in my shop. I asked God, Lord, you said if I plant the vineyard, I'm going to eat the fruit thereof. Why is it that I worked hard, I went to university, and now I'm a hawker? Did I go to KU to be a hawker? So I was conversing with God in my shop. By that time, I'd started listening to so many messages. One thing that the city of Bungoma has blessed me with was the many Bible schools that were here. And I would go into, into their libraries. Right? Let me say this. Before we began our ministry, we were 10 years. We were in Bible school, Bungoma Bible School, under Pastor Justice. Okay? May God bless that man of God. You see, out of that library, I saw books by Kenneth Hagin. I knew Kenneth Hagin before. He was a teacher of faith. I got some other books from Bishop Machuzi's library, Bethesda. I got Kenneth Copeland books there. I got Oral Roberts books in CLT, which is in Mandizini. Because of the way life was trying to treat me, I decided I'm going to do something. I'm going to equip myself spiritually with all these great men of God. And that's why it's important to hear other people's testimony. I would hear about Kenneth Copeland, how he used to be broke before he went to Oral Roberts University. So at least I could relate with that. Okay. I knew that one day even me I'll have a testimony. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and one day our viewer will have a testimony. One day you have a testimony if you are willing to listen. So I got the information, the message of faith. Right? And I believed that I could exercise my faith in the area of prosperity. You see, Sami, when I was broke, if I laid hands on you, if you are sick, you'll be healed. I saw the power of God flow through my hands. But one day I asked, my, I asked the Lord, why is it that these hands, this anointing cannot bring bread? Because those years, from 2001 up to 2005, how many years are those? Those are four years, plus two years after I left college. Those are six years. So Sami, I was unemployed for six years. Six years. And those years I was learning. I was willing to learn. Initially, I had people saying prosperity gospel. I used to think it's a bad gospel. And let me tell you something. If you have never been broke, the way I was broke, <laughs> you'll never. Don't criticize what you don't understand. You see? Mimi nimefungiwa nyumba. One day I came from home, from work in Zimmerman when I was in Nairobi before I got married, and found two padlocks on the door. I looked at one padlock, it was mine. The other one was foreign. And I came to realize it belonged to the owner of the house. I had not paid the rent. <laughs> then you can never respect prosperity. In this town, Bungoma, when I was here, I mean, I used to dodge the, the landlord. Now the landlord na kula kona. Then they meokoka, my friend. So, uh, let me tell you. Unakula kona kwa sabu ukijaribu kulipa rent. Biashara imeenda. So, I struggled here. But I spoke, I was talking to God and God spoke to me. And told me, I want you to prepare yourself. I had the voice of God. 
if you are serving a God who does not talk, then that is not Jehovah God. Because idols don't talk. But God of Israel speaks even today. I hope you, you are comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. A God who speaks, right? And so in 2003, God spoke to me. I was in my shop. And the Lord said to me, I want to, you to prepare yourself. I want you to get back to school. I want to, you to prepare because I want you to be my mouthpiece. I want you to speak for me to the young people of your generation, to the youth. At that time, 2003, I think I was around 29 years, right? And I asked the Lord, Lord, do you want me to go to Bible school? Do you want me to go to a theological school? Because up to that point, I just my first degree was in sociology. And the Lord said, no, I want you to go and study public health. So that you can you'll be able to talk about me and you'll also be able to talk about health issues and all that. So that's how I went to do Masters of Public Health. The idea for me to do Masters of Public Health came from the Lord. God spoke to me in 2003. I took a step and I went and to my university and I applied and after some times they gave me the invitation right now going for that that course is another miracle I needed 50,000 shillings within three weeks and I didn't have by the time God was speaking to me my business was not doing well so up to that point, I still apply for jobs. Nobody talks to me. Nobody says anything. It's like my whole world was closed. But God said to me in 2003, when you do this, I'm going to open doors for you. I'm going to put you on the radio. I'm going to put you on television. I'm going to give you a platform. That time, there was no radio in Bungoma. I'd never been in a radio station. There was no television. But God said, I will set you there and you are going to speak to young people through those channels. And he said, one day, you will also be involved in policy making. All those things I wrote them in, if you have my diary for 2003, you see that. 2003, I did not even know the name policy means what. <laughs> I didn't. So when I went to Moy University School of Public Health, I began doing my course. But how did I go there? It took a miracle for me to go there, which I'll tell you in short. I prayed to get the money for the school fees because I didn't have it. And within 21 days, I had it. I fasted for 21 days. 21 days. I want to tell you I took a prayer and fasting of 21 days, day and night. You have 21 days to pay 50,000. Yes. You decide, no, I'm going to... I'm going to pray. take Daniel fast. My wife came with a book by Dr. Rob, Bob jo Rogers. Dr. Bob Rogers is called 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. I took the book. I thought it was two days of prayer and fasting. I would not seen the one at the end. <laughs> and the first statement I read from that book was, prayer and fasting breaks poverty. I said, no way. I should have known all these years. I don't believe prayer can break poverty. <laughs> but listen, prayer and fasting can break the spirit of poverty, because poverty can be a spiritual thing. That's why you see all these developing nations, we have received donations all these years, and we are still struggling even today, because poverty is spiritual. That is a lesson of another day. Poverty is spiritual. Yes, the spirit of poverty, you have to break it through prayer and fasting have a class for that. and so that's how i went to my university and god had told me that within one year of doing that course i'll get a job within one year i was in charge of Bungoma district i was i got a job with world vision international i was in charge of Bungoma. i was a district hiv coordinator and that's my journey of hiv program so in, in short sami god spoke to me and give me a clear-cut direction for my life in 2003. I have not deviated from that. And uh, within all these struggles, what kept you going? One, I had a supporting wife. I had a supporting wife because when I told my wife that God has spoken to me, she looked at me and she said, if God have said it, 
Does it mean we fold our business? I said it means we fold our business. So we go back to square one. You're already struggling. You're going to struggle more. <laughs> she asked me, how long will this program take? I told her the master's program takes two years, but you have an allowance of up to six years. <laughs> and you've already been unemployed for six years. Yeah. But I told my wife, God said to me that if I agree to do this program, within one year, within 12 months from today, I'll have a job. My wife said, let's go for it. God has said it, let's go for it. So, so number one, a supporting wife. Number two, I heard from God. You must have ability to hear from God. The most important skill that you can learn as a Christian today is to hear from God. Because if you can only hear the voice of God, your struggle will end that day. It takes one word from heaven to change your life. One word from God will change your life forever. Can you imagine, Sami? God spoke to me in 2003, and the things he told me will happen is what is happening in my life today. Let me show you. 2005, I began the World Vision program. It, the, coincidentally, it was that program was not supposed to be in Bungoma. But do you know, in the interview, when they asked me, where do you want to work? These words came out of my spirit. I said, Bungoma. And do you know what they said? Steve, we have decided, if we are going to give you this job, we are going to change the project site to Bungoma. Wow. How lovely. <laughs> that is God. It's not Steve. It's God. God will make a way for you even where there is no way. So suddenly, Sami, I suddenly started now living a different life when I got that job. And then, coincidentally, that program, of course, was a youth program. Now you see, the word that God gave me in 2003 came to pass. Number three, the program had a radio program. I can tell you I was one, what God spoke to me in 2003. So we began radio program those days in Sayari. I used to go to Eldoret. I would have a live radio program talking about, you know, different issues. It was a life skills program. Young people would call. I would talk about decision making, drugs and substance abuse, HIV, peer pressure, managing peer pressure, all those kind of things. So that's when I, I became a life coach, but through the radio. And then after a period of about eight months, I heard that a new station, radio station had come in Bungoma. And guess which station is that? Mm -hmm. West FM. <laughs> West FM. And, um, our sister station. Yes, your sister station. And, and I was one of the first corporate clients for West FM. And um, that's how it began. And you see what God told me, that I'll be on the radio, I'll put you on the radio. Every, every Saturday, I was in West FM studios, talking to young people, live radio. I liked it. Four years I did that. And then, of course, now, you see today I'm here, West FM, West TV, West TV. <laughs> and I've had opportunities to be on the television or even on national television, uh, just talking about... Uh, HIV and other things. So, no, uh, you see, word of God did not fail. Mm -hmm. So, hearing from God and you doing that, what God has shown you to do, will break every man of barrier. As we draw to a conclusion, uh, um, I want you to speak to youths because they are out there, because of uh, the pandemic, the schools have been closed. They don't know what to do. Magoha says, uh, Professor Magoha, uh, he has said, it might not even open in January. So, what do we do with our land as youth? Okay, number one, Sami, I want to say that the Bible says that it is important for a young man to bear the yoke while he's just a youth. Number one, as a young person, you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If I did not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I could not have heard from God in 2003. By 2003, I'd been unemployed for six years. But God turned my captivity around. He spoke to me. So you need to have Jesus. Jesus Christ is the hope. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
without Jesus Christ, you have no hope. And when we talk about hope, hope is not just life after death. It's even hope for now. What do you do when you have a challenge? Unemployment can be a challenge. Like now, we have so many people who have lost jobs, isn't it? They need hope. I can tell you that if you have Christ, there is hope for you. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that to him who is joined to all the living, right? There is hope for him. And then he says, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. A living dog is better than a dead lion. So the number one thing, you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Number two, you need to have goal. You will never be motivated in life without goals. And I, I don't want just to talk about goal. Uh, the way we do in, in management, I know we talk about goal setting, which is good. And in fact, but I'll give you an acronym for goal setting. Uh, I want to read a scripture in 1 Corinthians 9, 24. It says, in a race, everyone runs. Everyone is running in Kenya. Everyone is busy, right? But only one person gets the first prize. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. I'm reading from the Living Bible. In a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the first prize. So run your race to win. You need to understand as a young person, there's a specific race that God decided for you. Every one of us, God has a plan for your life. When you discover it, you are on the winning side. Okay? That plan will become revealed to you when Jesus Christ is in you. When Christ comes into you, it's like a software. I'm sorry to use that word, software. Yeah. He is going to unleash God's plan for your life. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered in the heart of any man, the things which God has kept in store for those who love him. But, those, but it has been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. So, you see, even your parents do not know what you are supposed to become in life. When I graduated, my father had hoped that I would become a manager in certain place. He even tried to connect me. Kunganisha waya. Lakini unaunganisha waya zinaleta short. Because God is not there. Yeah. You see? Not in those wires. God is not in those wires. <laughs> you see? So, but there's a race for you. God told Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you a hope and a future. So, that plan, tonight a race, the race of life. Where God designed you to be a race, a, 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 an athlete of 400 meters. Me, God has made me to be an athlete of marathon. Another guy, an athlete of 100 meters. Those types of athletes do not do the same exercise. Not 100 meters like it. Azima kwe na muscles kuba sana. To burn 100 meters. But not a marathon. Unona mugu ni konde kama hii. But you are win. Because you are designed for your race. So as a young person, you must believe you are designed for your race. And Paul is saying in verse 25, to win the contest, you must deny yourself. Deny yourself. Many things that would keep you from doing your best. An athlete goes to all this trouble to win a blue ribbon or silver cup. But we do it for a heavenly reward. Then verse 26. So I ran straight to the goal. I wanted to come here. You must have a goal. You will never win in this life if you are just goalless. No one wins without a goal. There is no soccer match that can be won without goal posts. Yeah. <laughs> you must have a goal. And you must go. You I must go. When you have a goal, then that's when you start now desiring now to score towards that goal. That's how life is. You must have a goal. So Paul said, I ran straight to the goal with the purpose in every step. That's how you need to live. Purpose in every step. I fight to win. Me, I don't do anything which I've not decided I'm going. If you see me doing something, I'm pouring myself in that thing. It's a matter of life and death. You must become that way if you are going to make it. I fight to win. I'm not just shadow boxing or playing around. Mm -hmm. Sammy, me. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing around in Bungoma. God sent me in Bungoma. There's a purpose for my life. There's a goal for my life. I fight to get this thing. And so, I want just to say you must have a goal. But I want you to spell the name goal this way. G-O-A-L. And I want to give you this acronym for your thinking. Number one, goal. G is for God. You need to have God. The Bible says, a fool says 
there is no God. It is foolish to live without God. It's not me. I'm not abusing it's anybody. The it's the Bible, man. He says in the book of Psalms, a fool says there is no God. I mean, many people are saying there is no God. There are people just, they are just fools. It's only we don't tell them, but they are fools. They do many things, but they don't put, where is Jesus here? Where is the gospel here? Nowhere. Foolish thing. <laughs> Fool. Uh, <laughs> but the Bible says, yes. the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you have a relationship with God, wisdom. Yes. You see, yes. Jesus, <laughs> the Bible says, is both the wisdom of God and the power of God. So you have both. When you have God, when you have Jesus, you have power, you have wisdom. Amen. And let me tell you, those two things, you can overcome anything. Amen. Number two, oh, goal, you need to do what is called order. Try to be a bit orderly. Try to be a bit orderly. God is a God of order. That's why your eyes, your two eyes are in front. They are not behind. It's order. Neither are they sideways. Hmm? Side That's you see when you look at how God created the earth, you can see God is a God of order. Mm. Try to move your life towards order. Some of you you're out of order because you no longer respect your parents. You no longer honor men of God and women of God. That is you're out of order. Any society that does not have a respect for men of God, Sami, any society that does not have a respect for prophets and priests. That society is going nowhere. And we must go back to order. We used to have a speaker who used to say order. Or, and I hear the Lord saying today, order. <laughs> order. You I'm must put, order. You, 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 you have to put your life in order. Be subject to God. Be subject to your parents. Have a man of God who can speak into your life. And you listen and obey. Thirdly, A is for attitude. If you're going to win in life, man, you must change your attitude. You must have a winning attitude. Okay? One of the attitudes is this. Winners never quit. Quitters never win. That's what I learned from Dr. Robert Schuller. You must learn. You must change your attitude. Your attitude will determine how far you can go. We say your attitude will determine your altitude, your height. And then lastly, that is powerful. Just repeat. Powerful. Your attitude will determine your attitude. How far, how high you can go. Powerful. Small thinking, small life. Change here. Change here. <laughs> lastly, yes. L. Learn. You must choose as a young person to be a lifelong student. If you come to my room, I've got hundreds of books. Even in my car, there must be a book. Me, I have a book everywhere. I have a book everywhere. Even in the toilet at times, I have a book. Because you don't know how long you're going to be there. <laughs> you, see, you just carry a short book there. And just get something to read. Learn something new every day. That is how to be goal-oriented. Apart from what I've read, having the physical goals, you must live a life that is full of God, full of obedience and order, full of change. You, you have to change your attitude and you have to learn. And the best attitude is the attitude of Jesus, the attitude of faith. He said, all things are possible. Men, you have to believe that. You have to believe that in your heart and think about it. And that is why we come to your screens every morning, every Sunday morning from 7 to 10 a.m. Kweza tu kukupa niti gritis the life. Nimejifunza mengi sana kutoka kwa Apostle Steve Kadaka. Na tukimalizia, someone is out there struggling. Could be struggling with sickness, could be struggling with so many things. Please, say a word to him or her as we draw to a close. My brother, my sister, I want you to know that there is hope for you. There is hope for you because Jesus Christ of Nazareth came to give us hope. The Bible says that as men, he came to his own, but his own refused or did not receive him. But as many as received Jesus, he gave them power to become sons of God. Today, I want you to know 
You need two things, power and wisdom. These two ingredients will help you to succeed. Okay? The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom will give you direction. And so, if you feel like you're hopeless, I want you to know that there is hope for you in Christ Jesus. There is hope for you in Christ Jesus. Jesus gave me hope. When they said there are no jobs, Jesus told me, I'll give you a job. You see, Jesus told me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when they tell you there's no way, if you have Jesus, Jesus will make a way for you. He's the one who parted the sea for the nation of Israel to pass through. So I don't know what is you are struggling against. I want you to know there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. And there is hope in having a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you and allow Jesus to come into your life. I want to pray for you. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Help my life. Turn my life around, O oh God. Today, I call upon the name of Jesus. For you say it in your word, whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall not be put to shame. And so I call upon you, Jesus. Save me out of this situation. If you have prayed that prayer, Jesus Christ has heard it. And right now, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God, come upon this viewer. And I pray that you touch them. I pray that you turn around their lives in the name of Jesus. Make their life better than it is today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 If you say the amen, it is done, right? Amen. It is done. It is done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Apostle, for coming through. Amen. It has been amazing, amazing, amazing. Amen. I've done, you know, I'm not just here to moderate. I'm here to learn to. Wow. And I've learned. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so when you go home, yes. please say hi to uh, Madam Teresa. I'll do that. Uh, say hi to her. We'll come to see her. Yes. I think if you want to meet us, I want you to know that our church, we always meet. We use the King, uh, KIE Hall. Kingdom Life Chapel welcomes you for uh, Sunday service, especially now that the churches have been open. We always begin from 10 up to 11. And you can get in touch with us. Uh, through the contacts that are shown you on the screen. God bless you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And may God bless you so that wakati mungine pia uzungumzi watu wengine. Asante. That's why we are here for every Sunday from 7 to 10 a.m. Kweza kukufunza, kukuchochea, na kweza kukupa tumaini. We are here to educate motivate and inspire you every Sunday. Niko na DJ Viano pande ule mwingine na jua mebambika sana. Ndio mbona tuki cheka cheka. Ajaya mbambika neno limeingia kabisa kabisa. And for a youth out there, najua umejifunza mengi zaidi. Basi usiliana nasi, be kind and share with us kwa social media kwa social platform zetu. Tuko pale West TV hiyo ni Facebook, alafu Twitter ni @westtv kenya at West TV underscore Kenya basi unatutumia uh, jumbe zako tunaweza kuinteract na tunaweza kushare tuta connect kwa apostola uh, ukitaka kuconnect kwa kwake sungumza na sisi tutakuunganisha na pia mm, yote itakuwa kwa ajili ya utukufu wa jina lake mwenyezi mungu SMS line yetu inapita pale make good use of it and your life will never be the same again right about now to the break tutaka break itakuwa na gonga na kudunda katika awamu ya tatu ya actual ambapo DJ Viana mesambo latest gospel hits atakuwa na kuchezea na baada hapo tutakutana kwa triple vote request three of the best artists tutakuwa tunaweka kwa mizani wewe mwenyewe utakuwa unachagua mmoja wao ambaye ngoma zake tatu tutakuwa tunakuacha nazo baada ya show mimi naitwa Samuel Mnai zidi kuganda nasi